and then spoke. Have you guys experienced that where you don't feel like the other person is listening? And you can tell their brain is just spinning. They're not listening. They're just waiting for you to stop talking so that they can say their piece. So habit five is listen, confirm back, right? Say back to them. So if I understand you correctly, what you're saying is blah, 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 blah. And then make your point. Make sense? Uh, can you guys think of a time or maybe a maybe not an exact time but a situation where you didn't feel like somebody was listening to you? What you got, Yona? Mm, sometimes like whenever you're trying to talk to a friend but it's kind of the same thing like trying to decide whether where you want to eat or not. Yep. And they don't want to listen to you at all because they're very set on where they want to go. Yep. Have you ever been in a store where you're talking to the salesperson and obviously you're quickly picking out that you're asking for something a little bit different from the norm and all they're hearing is like the norm yeah. and you're like, no, 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 wait a second, this is what I need. Make sense? <clears throat> all right, so that is habit five and I love that, that graphic. Uh, if you've ever used the can and the string to communicate, so when you talk, you put it at your mouth. When you listen, you put it to your ear. Only one person can talk at a time, right? Otherwise, it doesn't work. So seek first to understand and then to be understood. Habit six, synergize. Not exactly. <laughs> so does anybody know what synergize besides Luke? <laughs> what does synergize mean? <laughs> All right, nobody knows. So synergize is when there's combined effort. So the, the Webster definition is the interaction of two or more agents or forces so that their combined effort is greater than the sum of the individual effort. So kind of the one plus one equals three. Um, you know, what's funny is in our culture, you know, we grow up in school, do individual work, right? You take a test, you don't get to have like a group work on your test. Um, and we carry that throughout our lives. Oftentimes in, in work, we want to say like kind of resumes, I did, I did this, I did that. When really synergy is working with a group because with multiple people, we get better things, right? Um, when, when we're developing an idea and we get input from others, the idea gets better. So here's, here's the example, is the Belgian draft horse, pictured here, can pull, and those are those real big horses, right? They're over your head, they're huge. One Belgian draft horse, say that 10 times, can pull 8,000 pounds. Two can pull 20 to 24,000 pounds. So one plus one equals three, right? Uh, by working together. Two trained Belgian horses that are trained to work together can pull 30 to 32,000 when they're trained to work together. That's an example of synergy. Uh, you know, the Bible says three cords are not easily broken, right? When we work together. So the idea of synergy is, it's not, we do better when we have input from others, right? Um, and when we work together. Have you ever had to clean the house by yourself? Bummer bill, right? But when you have a few folks all helping, get some music going, right? It's awesome. You can do tons of the house. And one plus one equals three or more, right? So habit, what is this, six, I think we're on habit six, is synergize. Get out of the mentality because it's inbred in us. Um, we don't have to do everything ourselves. It's okay to have help from others and to help others and to work together on things. But how, you know, for that to happen, the how, we have to be able to trust one another, right? We have to be able to cooperate. 
Um, but synergy is really important, especially when we think about the draft horses, and that's how it works for us. <coughs> when we had two, we got almost three times the pounds pulled. Let's see, did I have a video? No video on that one. All right, so then habit seven wraps up all the habits. So the first three were private, second three were public. Habit seven is so critical, gang. Um, and, and being young, you guys could go kind of forever and ever, right? You have relatively boundless energy, um, but this is a really important thing now and in the future as you get older. So here's a story. Two men are cutting down trees. One man works all day, doesn't stop. Just cut, 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 cut. The other man, every hour, takes a 10 minute break. And the one that kept working was like, I am totally gonna beat this guy, he keeps taking breaks. The end of the day comes and they look at the wood that they cut and the one that took breaks had more wood. And the, and the first guy said, I didn't take any breaks. I worked all day long. How did you cut more logs than I did? Anybody know the answer? The second man says, I sharpened my saw on my brakes. So he was working with sharp saws all day. So that is so critical. It's so critical that God gives us the Sabbath and he tells us to, to rest, right? And it's not because necessarily he's just nice. He knows that we need that rest. When we go, just go and go and go. I had a day last week. I didn't, I didn't stop for lunch. I didn't take breaks. I was a mess by the end of the day. And I probably could have done a lot better if I had taken my breaks, if I had stopped for lunch. Um, I was just clobbered by the end of the day. So, sharpen the saw. Ways we can sharpen the saw physically. What are some of the things, and it's even on the screen. Yes, Peter. One thing to add to what you just said. Um, there's six, seven days in a week, you rest the seventh, correct? Correct. There's 60 minutes in an hour, and you rest the next 10 minutes. Yep. There's 70 minutes for you. Numbers are incredibly important in the Bible. He's got you. That's dude. one thing the Bible's taught me. It's an important <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> good, that's good. So physically, what are some of the ways we can sharpen our saw? Exercise. Exercise, what else? It's even on the screen. Get a filer. Get a filer. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep. Sleep is critical, right? What are some of the ways we can sharpen our saw spiritually? Praying. Praying, right? What are some of the other ways? Fellowship. Ooh, that's a good one. That's an easy one to go by the, by the wayside, right? Is fellowship. And isn't it funny how the world wants to schedule things on Sundays, right? To keep us from, from our fellowship. What else can we do spiritually to sharpen our saw? Read the Bible. Read the Bible, right? Good stuff. Mentally, how, how do we sharpen our saw? Researching. Yeah. What else? It's on the screen. Really just doing school. What doing do school. Minute? Yeah, doing school. Yeah, you guys do a lot mentally, right? I mean, that's your full-time job right now. <laughs> Something on there is reading. Um, I say this, I think, every month. You should be reading something every, all the time. I recommend that at 15 minutes a day, read a book. You can read a whole book in like 20 days. Um, there are so many great books. And on the Facebook, I put uh, some books, some recommended reading that, that you can do. There's so many great books. Um, what do you were you with us when I was listening to the podcast uh, and you talked about thinking grow rich? Maybe my mic wasn't with us. Um, I guess it was uh, Cindy and I. We were listening to a podcast, and and uh, this business owner was like, 
Oh, the book oh. Think and Grow Rich is, is so important. Um, that's something that Mike has read reluctantly. Yeah. Uh, but there's so many things that you guys can be reading, and not just the uh, you know, fictional fun stuff. There's so much to learn. When you're watching TV and you hear th things, yesterday we had the news on, and the mayor of Denver is working on, I think I'm going to say this right, gen gentrification, gentrification. I didn't know what that was. Anybody know what, what that is? Ha uh ha, -huh. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> so I Google it now, I know. So it's when you take uh, like, like poor areas and fix up the buildings to make it attractive to the middle class. So mentally sharpening your saw as you hear things, be, be curious. Google it. And then social, uh, emotional, what, what are some of the ways being sharpened or saw there? Sir. Sir. Oh, man, Abby, that was a good one. I didn't think of that. Was that on there? It's on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's still good. Sir, man. I don't know about you guys, but I don't get really excited about having to go serve. Um, you know, hey, it's Friday night. What are we going to do? Let's go serve. Uh, <laughs> but once you do it, it's pretty awesome, yeah. isn't it? It does uh, show up in the soft. Good. Uh, so, how does Habit 7 apply in your life? <clears throat> what are some of the things that you can do to sharpen your saw? Sleep. 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 <laughs> Sleep. That's important, right? Have you ever just been spongy? You're so tired, you're just like, can't even hardly, hardly spell your name. <laughs> Good. Yes. I know for me, listening to music can really help me rejuvenate and just get my thoughts together. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, one of the things it talked about was uh, even meditating, right? Um, uh, meditating, planning. It's important to have downtimes. I've, I've uh, known people that once a quarter, which is three months of the year. Kind of, I'll explain it later, Michael. Um, <laughs> they would take a day and that's all they would do is kind of reflect on the past quarter and what the plans are for the new quarter. Um, so that, that's a good one, Keto. All right. So we have our seven habits is laid out by Stephen Covey. So as I said at the beginning, I'm going to ask you which one, if you had to pick one, really kind of struck you and maybe you'll put it in your toolbox for 2018. Yes, Michaela. Um, so for Habit 5, uh, I've taken quite a few psychology and sociology classes at this point and when you tell somebody that you understand what they're saying, it actually has a psychological effect on them that calms all of their body. Wow. So if you want to win arguments, tell somebody that you understand that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. And along with that, something I've heard and something I've lived is um, it's dangerous to say I understand how you feel. You know, they, you know if you've never like lost a parent, you know, and you're trying to be kind to someone that lost a parent. You know, like, I know how you feel. You do not know how I feel. <laughs> you know. Uh, so. Very important to acknowledge, right? To let them know that you understand what they're saying. Uh, but just a tidbit, you know, right? I've been kicked in the head before. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to necessarily say you know how they feel unless you really know exactly how they feel. Uh, but yes, so important. Isn't that interesting? Physiological effect on their whole body. What else? Anybody else want to? volunteer of these habits, what well, one is like, dang, I'm going to work on that one. Probably sharpen the saw, honestly, because it's easy to take downtime, but it's hard to apply that to like, actually, like, refresh yourself. And right. Like that. Yep. I like beginning with the end in mind, because procrastination is, like, the worst for me. Right. So... Yeah, that's an important one for me. Yeah. Uh, begin with the end in mind. You know, you guys are at an age where... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Say what? <laughs> 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 that was kind of bad. 
I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> back. We need it. The TV is sharpening it's the saw. Time. I know, right? <laughs> the TV is sharpening the saw. It's literally been 60 minutes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are at an age where, beginning with the end in mind, uh, you guys are going to start thinking about careers, about marriage, about what school you're going to go to, if you go to school, do I go to school, do I not go to school, what, what, uh, uh, what line of work do I want to do. So critical, make sure you don't climb the ladder of success to get to the top and realize you're leaning against the wrong wall, right? All right, some more things. Jenna, do you want to share? I would say sharpen the saw. Okay, why is that? Because, kind of for the same reason, like I just go and, and then I, like if I took a break, I would be able to get much more done instead of like going slow. Right, right. Good. Anybody else want to offer anything? That, um, no I think for me, it's put first things first because like prioritizing like makes a world of difference. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. And when, when we knock out, we enjoy quadrant three and four most of the time, right? The not important, not urgent stuff.